Today we're talking with Sarah McKenzie about what makes a good picture book. Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. If there's one thing Charlotte Mason homeschoolers love, it's good books. And today we have a treat in store for you. We are talking with Sarah McKenzie from Read Aloud Revival all about what she looks for in a good picture book. Sarah, it's great to have you back. Oh my goodness, I'm happy to be here and really happy to be talking about my favorite thing on the planet. Absolutely. <laughs> now, you know, this one might go for, you know, four hours yeah, or maybe. so. We'll see. We can cut it off. <laughs> but, all right, let's talk about, I know you have guidelines for all kinds of books that are out there, and you recommend all kinds of books on your Read Aloud Revival, yes. as in for all the different ages. Yes, yes. So let's focus in on picture books. My favorite. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Tell us what you look for in a good picture book. Okay, so this is one of those things where I feel like when I was first, I remember when my oldest was one, one year old, I went to the library. I wanted to get some new books because we had like 10 board books that I had read and memorized. And, Forever, yes. Yes. And I thought, well, I'm going to get some new books to read from the library. And I walk into the children's room and I just thought, there's this sea of books, and I know some of these are better than others because we all have that experience of reading a picture book and thinking, I think I'm going to drop this one behind the couch <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it can't yeah. be found again, yeah. or the ones that we really love and don't mind reading again and again. So I got very curious about what was it, what is it that makes me want to pick up a book again? And um, so I have de developed some opinions with a capital O <laughs> about this, but one of the things that I look for is is good illustrations. And what does that mean? What does like a good illustration mean? For me, it really just means illustrations that make me want to look longer than necessary. Mm, so I love that definition. It might be art that I would actually hang on my wall. Not always, maybe though. It's just art that makes me want to look at it. And I feel like this is very Charlotte Mason idea because yeah. it is respecting a child as a born person when we're putting the best art in front of them, when we yeah. put art that would be worth putting up on a wall or that makes you want to sit with it and linger over it. Um, one really good example of this is um, Blueberries for Sale by Robert McCloskey. And all of Robert McCloskey's books, of course, they're classics. One Morning in Maine, Make Way for Ducklings. Um, Blueberries for Sal is my own personal favorite. And the illustrations in this book really do make you want to look a little bit longer than you must. Um, because if you just read the words or you just looked at the pictures, you could get the gist of the story. You could get most of it, but a little something would be lost. And so even though they're only done in two-tone and they're sketches, they're not like full paintings, doesn't need, mean, you know, good art doesn't necessarily mean complicated art, but art that I enjoy looking at as much as my three-year-old looks enjoys looking at. So many wonderful details that Robert included in there, even though it is just a sketch. And as you said, you might not hang that on your wall. So there's not just one particular style that is considered good art. Yes. Um, I, we've had Amber O'Neill Johnston on our podcast previously, yes. and she's talked about how another important part of the illustrations is letting the child see other children that look like her mm. or that look like him. Mm -hmm. So um, I love this new adaptation, The Story of Little Babaji. I haven't seen this one. It is oh. so cool. I love the pictures. Yes, I love I the do. pictures. <laughs> oh, yes. yes, yes, yes. Because the original story, when it came out... <laughs> look at this tiger. Isn't it great? <laughs> and he's hiding. And, you know, it's, it's one of those you look longer and longer, yes, as you said. Yes, you want to yes. just see all the details. When this originally came out, not this particular version, but the story came out, the pictures in it did not do justice to the India mm. setting. Mm. And this has it set in India, so it's just, yeah, it's fabulous. I, I really like this. It's very, it's a small book, but I think it carries some huge ideas with the illustrations that are in it. Well, and you know, one of the really great things about illustrations is they don't always have to be beautiful or solemn or something. Mm -hmm. Imogene's Antlers by David Small is such a <laughs> fabulous example because this story is so funny. Um, 
you have this little girl who wakes up with antlers and the whole rest of the day the family is trying to figure out how to get rid of her antlers but I mean the mother who's always fainting and yes. it's not even always in the text but that you have to look at the illustrations longer than necessary in order to see what's going on yes. in every page yes and I love how each member of the family responds in a different way mm. like you said the mother is all about oh we've got to fix this <laughs> and the maid is like, oh, good, another place to hang my donuts and send her out to be a bird feeder. And the brother is, you know, having fun with this, too. He's trying to figure out how, you know, what we could use all the antlers for. Just all the different people and how they respond to it. And Am Imogene just, or Imogene, I don't know how it's yeah. pronounced. Yes, I don't either. Her, the girl, <laughs> just kind of goes through the day and... I'm not going to give away the ending. The ending is very funny. The ending is fabulous. <laughs> yeah. And that also makes me think that Charlotte said we don't want to give the children a lot of twaddly nonsense, but they can still have fun, silly books yes. sometimes. Not for their schoolwork, of course, but fun, silly books like that can be a joy. Yes, yes. So illustrations, that's a big piece. Of course, with picture books, a really good picture book, a, half of the story is told through the illustration at least. And so that's a really important piece. But another piece that I look for is language that I want to read aloud. You know, that mm. might be delicious to say. Um, one really good example of this is Kiyoshi's Walk by Mark Carlins. And this is a good example of a new book. Yeah. A lot of times I think we think, oh, the best books are the old books. But that is not always true. There are some fabulous picture books coming out, um, chapter books, middle grade novels coming out today that still do all of these things. They have illustrations you want to look at longer than necessary. They have really beautiful language. In Kiyoshi's Walk, your kids will learn all about haiku, and the language itself is beautiful. It the is. dripping faucet takes me back to my old home, raindrops on frog pond. Every page or every few pages, there is another haiku, and the words, when you, when you flip through this at the library, you can just decide really quickly, but in, in a minute or so, um, is this something that I would enjoy reading aloud? And usually that means it has elevated vocabulary. Um, it doesn't feel like it's dumbed down or talking down to your child. Um, again, goes back right back to that respecting the child as a person. Yes, beautiful stories, well told. Yes. Yeah. And if it's, as you said, if it doesn't attract your interest and draw you in, mm -hmm. I think that comes across when you read it aloud to your child. Oh, I think so. I mean, you might yes. put on a good face and think you're faking it really good, but but on the tenth time through, let's face it, you know, your your um, irritation. It's probably going to come through. And as you said, you'll probably drop it over the back of the couch. <laughs> well, yes, oh, exactly. Oh, where did that book go? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a huge difference between that and reading something like Imogene's Antlers, like I, we were just talking about, and you turn a page and laugh out loud because there's donuts all on Imogene's you know, <laughs> antlers. And, I mean, that kind of sheer enjoyment or delight, our kids... They see it and they they absorb it and it you know it's exactly like when someone's laughing and it makes you laugh just because the joy just sort of bubbles over and is contagious. That's what our children can get, not just from funny books, but from a, re a book that's worth sharing. Yeah, that shared experience. So much more happens when you're reading aloud to a child mm. than just the story. Yes, there's so much more going on. Yes. Have you read The Enchanted Hour? Yes, by oh. Megan Cox Gurdon. Yes. 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 That really details a lot of those ideas of what all is happening in those times of reading aloud. Yeah, so, she's got a lot of research there, yeah. too, that shows you exactly what's happening in interpersonally between you, between your child and the books they're reading. In the between child's your child's brain? Yes. Yeah. The child and so themselves. Yeah. yeah. Very fascinating. Yeah. Very fascinating. When we're talking about um, language... This one was new to me, A Long Road on a Short Day. I just love this book so much. <laughs> it is so cool. And I love the pictures, too. Yes. The pictures are just fabulous. But the language in it was really good. And it's short chapters, mm -hmm. so it would be a good one to read like to your five-year-old as a chapter book, I would think. Although, and here's another thing about language, it appeals to all ages. Yes. I mean, your little one will want to listen in, too. I mean, that's one of the things I think this book does uniquely well. 
is that it can appeal to a wide range of ages because it has pictures on almost every page. At least there's an illustration in every chapter, and the chapters are very short, right? Yes. But the language, again, it's not dumbed down. So even while there's less words than there would be in a middle grade novel, it's got a really rich story. It's got beautiful, the, the sentences are beautifully constructed. Yeah. So I think your 12-year-old would enjoy it just like your 3-year-old would. And that is really helpful for homeschooling families who are trying to, you know, cover a lot of bases That's right. <laughs> a lot of the time. That's right, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, let's see. Here's another one that I think really appeals to a mm. wide range, range, of, range of ages. Patricia Polacco's work often does this, I think. Her picture books often can. They're funny. They're um, longer. Almost all of them have more text on them than you would see from a picture from you know most picture books that you'd pick up off the shelf. Um, but the stories are often very rich and cultural, and there is a lot to dig into there. They're meaty. There's layers. You could read it five times and catch something you missed on the first time. Yes, and I love the idea that's in the Bee Tree book that books are like honey. Mm, you yes. Know, you should desire them. Yes. It's like there, there's an idea we want our kids to have right there. Yeah. Well, ideas. Let's talk about that, actually, because okay. that's the other piece, I think, is a timeless. We're looking for good illustrations that make yeah. us want to look longer than necessary. We want beautiful language we want to read out loud that tastes good in our mouth, right? Mm. And we want ideas that are timeless and that are ideas we want our children to um, think about. Give me the yeah. Charlotte Mason quote here. There's got to be, I know there is one on giving your child something worth thinking about, caring about. Yeah, well, there's one on nature study where a, uh, something about a child who is always paying attention, you should give them something that's worth their attention. Uh, that's not how it is yeah. quoted exactly, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that idea. Yes. And it's the same with the picture books. And, and it's just like what Charlotte was talking about, how what do parents sow? Mm. What do we sow? Um, what seeds do we sow? We mm. sow ideas. Yeah, And that's in good. the books especially, all the ideas that are included, I think when you're picking picture books or any book, but especially the picture books, yes, check for the illustrations. Yes, make sure it has good language, but also it's not just... Well, it doesn't matter what he reads as long as he's reading. No. You know? That just no. yeah, <laughs> irritates me. Yeah. The ideas are just as important. Yes. And what is this child absorbing? For example, this have you seen this one, Anna Carey's Water? No. Fabulous book about a whole family. I believe they're are they in Jamaica? I think it takes place in Jamaica. It doesn't say in the storyline. Okay. okay. But um they don't have running water in their home, so all the kids, a couple times a day, they'll each take a container of some sort, depending on how big the child is. Okay. And they all go to the main village's place where they can get water. So they do this long trek across fields of cows and go over there, and they get the water filled up. And all the older kids, they put a, oh, by the way, they put a banana leaf on top. Oh. So it won't spill. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know you could. <laughs> There's an idea yeah. for you. You know, yeah, next time right. you yeah. need something not yeah. to spill, put the leaf on. <laughs> but then they all put them on their heads to carry them mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. But Anna, the littlest, hasn't learned how to do that yet, and she really wants to. Mm -hmm. So the whole book is about her desire to mature in that way. The siblings, her siblings, are so supportive of her. Mm. They don't make fun of her at mm. all. They just say, it'll happen when you're ready. You don't have to keep trying. It'll just, you know, not as not as in don't do it, but as in don't get anxious about the trying. Yes. Just keep, keep going and it'll happen. Um, the... The idea of all the children contributing to the family oh, yes. chores and wow. the work is in there. Yeah. Um, and then at one point, she's scared to death of the cows in the field. And so she's running back home, and, and she comes in terrified, and the kids are like, what's wrong, what's wrong? She's like, the cows are chasing me. And they said, do you mean those cows? And she turns and looks, and they're all still lying down <laughs> in the field, <laughs> chewing their cud, just kind of looking at her. 
<laughs> so the idea of dealing with your fears. Yes. All of those Imagination ideas. run wild. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's all in just a little picture book. Yeah. But it's not preachy. I was going to say that. It sounds to me like it's done through a really well-told story. Exactly. And that's a huge difference between a book that sets out to teach a lesson, where yes. you, it's very clear that that is the point of the book. And sometimes the titles even say that that's <laughs> yes. the point of the book. I yes. see so many of those these days. Yes. A book about... Which is not a book that any of my children would pick up off a bookshelf. But a book like this would be... It's a story, so it draws them in with all this good storytelling... Another really good one that does something similar is Brave Irene by William oh, Stye. Oh, yes. And again, we have this story, and it is, I mean, there is a little bit of a hint there in the title, right, um, about courage and overcoming your fear and and overcoming obstacles. But the story is not preachy because the story itself is worth telling on its own. Yes. And then what happens is, because there's this respect for the child, I think, to make connections, the author doesn't feel like they have to tell you what you're supposed to take out of the story. Yes. I think that's the big difference between a preachy book and a book that's not. Exactly. Is that there's that respect for the child to make their own connections, to meet the ideas in the story for themselves. And a good book, I think, has... A, an abundance of good ideas in it, not just one. Well, that's a good point. So, for example, in the Anna Carries Water, we listed like four or five different ideas in that book. Yes. But the child's going to take what he or she is ready for yes. at that particular reading. Yes. So, as you said, when they go back and, and read it again and again, they might be ready for one of the other ideas at that point. And so it's it's the gift that this keeps on so, giving. That's so good because it also <laughs> reminds me that, you know, I will have read, you know, the Little House books, Little House on the in the Big Woods and um, Little House on the Prairie and the whole series with my children so many times. Yeah. But when they hear it when they're seven, they're in a different place or a different person than they are when they're 12. And so when they revisit that book, it's like they're reading it at a whole different level because, the, again, they're getting whatever they're fit for. They're, it's like we've spread this feast and they get to they get to take what they're, what they're ready for. I think that is what some of what you mean by timeless. Mm, yes. Yes. That I have the same thing with the Little House books. I mean, I read those voraciously when I was young. Yeah. And I identified with Laura. Mm. Now when I read them to my kids, I identify with Ma. Yes, for exactly. many of the things, you know, not yes. completely, but I, yes. I'm thinking more about what she went through, yeah. at, you know, in the log cabins and in the the wagon and well, even that scene that where um, she there's the bear and she tells Laura to run into the house. Go to the house. And as yes. a child, I would read that so differently than as a mother, where I think, oh, would my child obey that quickly? Yes, <laughs> I don't yes. think that they would. <laughs> exactly. And same yeah. thing with uh, Little Women. Yes. When I read Little Women, yeah. I would identify with the kids. Yeah. But now when I read it to my Little Women, my four uh-huh. girls, yes. I identify with Marmy. Of course. So, yeah, I think that's part of the timeless. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Those aren't picture books, but, you know. Oh, that's true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we could probably talk about books for a good long while, I Sonia. think we could. I think we could. But I like your three points on what you look for in a picture book. And you are starting read aloud revival is starting to foray into their own publishing correct yes so we have started our own boutique publishing house called waxwing books and we're publishing picture books in fact um books that do these three things you know that have illustrations you want to look at longer than necessary that have language that you want to read aloud because the language is so delicious and that have these timeless ideas so the book would be could be read um, kind of like many of the books that we've pointed out today. They were Blueberries for Sale was read to me as a child that I'm reading to my children and my children will probably read to their children because it's the kind of book that can stand the test of time. It's timeless. It's got good ideas that that are timeless and don't aren't confined to one period of time. So that's what we're trying to do at Waxing Books. So our first book is A Little More Beautiful, The Story of a Garden. That one's out now. And we have another one coming up later this year as well called While Everyone is Sleeping. And with every book we're making, those are our three things we're really trying to do with each of the books. And are you doing a variety of authors? or? I'm... So the first several books are all written by me, but they're a very, thank you, but they are uh, illustrated by a variety of illustrators. So okay. all five of our first books, um, um, I did write all five of those, and then we have five different illustrators for each of those, and then we're hoping to open up to new authors. But we're building this plane as we're flying it, so yeah. so we're we're uh, we'll figure it out as we go. It's Here. exciting. Now, 
I understand that your first one mm -hmm. was illustrated by Breezy Brookshire. Yes. Love her illustration. Talk about art that makes you want to look longer than oh, necessary. Yes. 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 And I especially love it because we used her to do the illustrations for our preschool program. Yes. That we're doing for Simply Charlotte Mason yes. called Our Preschool Life. And so her illustrations are included in that as well. Yeah, when I saw one of the illustrations for that, I thought, oh, that looks like breezy art. Yeah, and it is. You can identify it wherever <laughs> yes. you see it. You yes. can see other watercolors like, no, no, no. Oh, there it is. That's breezy. Yes, right there. exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It's yeah. wonderful. Well, we include favorite picture books in our monthly box for our preschool life so that the kids can have one of these books delivered yes. to their home as a little gift to them so excited when they get their box mm. with their book in it and other stuff is in the book to, in in the box as well but we want to include the waxwing book in there we'll have to make sure we keep in touch so yes. we can cuz we're always looking for good picture books to include excellent. in those boxes excellent that'll be great Aww. and where can people get in touch with you well, at readaloudrevival.com, that's where my podcast is and where I've got lots of book lists. So if you are looking for more books that are, you know, if people are looking for more books like these, um, that's the best place for those. And then all of our books at Waxwing, you can find them at waxwingbooks.com. Wonderful. Thanks, Sarah. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe. We'll leave all the links in the show notes for you, and I'll see you next time.